how do we know that these are the word the words from God? Based on the evidences, obviously, how do you know Islam is from God? This is the same question. But you look at the Quran, you look at the evidences that display whether this is from God or not. For example, that the Quran cannot be Im the, be imitated in the Arabic language. It's a scripture that have been there. The challenge has been for Christians, especially Christian Arabs, Christian. And no one has been able to imitate the Quran. And they admit it is the highest eloquent speech in the Arabic language. It cannot be imitated. It has its own genre in Arabic because it's a, it's a miracle by itself. So the Quran has a specific not, challenge. Yeah. Hmm? I heard it's not replicable. I heard it's its own... It's 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 like this like beautiful yeah. way of writing. And, and, and if I want to simplify that, that, that it's not about being beautiful because the criteria is objective. I'll, I'll try to simplify for you the criteria, okay. right? In, in, if I say to you, speak to me in English, yeah. using English letters, okay, but do not use any English grammatical or or use English grammatical constructs that we use, but also use new English grammatical constructs that we didn't use before, and the speech has to be eloquent. Also, bring words. We did not know, but we still understand. We bring a word in English that we do not know, but I will understand if I hear it. Also bring a, an old word that was used in a specific way and use it in a new way in that sentence that you make. It sounds so do all of that. Do all of that in one sentence for me. And I, then I don't think I can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving you an example. This is this is a part. which is not all. It's just a part of the criteria of what mm -hmm. makes a Quran, a chapter of the Quran uh, not being able to be replicated. So, for example, chapter the first chapter of the Quran, Surah mm -hmm. Al-Fatiha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you start by Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alami. Okay, let's let's kind of look at that. Alhamdu, the word Hamdu means praise. And it's it's a praise without a return. It's not like the praise that you get something in return. Like thanks. Thanks and praise are different in the Arabic. Right? So thanks, if you give me something, I say thank you. Shukr. But praise is, is nothing in return, right? So praise is the word the Arabs use. But the Arabs never used Alhamdu, the praise. Because okay. they never had a human that they would attribute. The constitution was not even in their mind that they would give all praise to a specific object or a thing. So they did okay. not use that in their language. So that's a new linguistic construct that the Quran brings. So Alhamdu, Lillahi, to Allah, Rabbi, Al-Alameen. Now Al-Alameen is a new word that was not, didn't exist before in pre-Islamic poetry. Al-Alameen, it means everything conceivable other than Allah. Okay. So it's a word that is new, completely new to the Arabic language, but they still understand it because it's close to another word called Alam. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'm giving you an example. It's one verse. So yeah. Quran says the whole chapter you will find if I go uh, throughout the verses, I'll show you. For example, Allah says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the very merciful. He uses two words, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, which come from the same root, but they have different meanings. Okay. And you do not speak like this in, in language. You do not say, In the name of the king, the great, the generous. People don't speak like that generally. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. in the Arabic language, they don't speak like that. Yeah. So that's a very unique thing that the Arabic, Arabic the, the Quran introduced is to uh, describe Allah with those attributes, sifat, and then the, describe those sifat in combination when speaking about the name of Allah. Okay. Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Malik Yawmiddin. The owner of the day. The concept of owning, owning time. I don't think it even exists in, in English history. Do you have a poetry where they speak about owning the day, owning the, the year, owning the hour? I don't think so. No. Owning time, you get the point. So Allah says mm -hmm. the owner of the day. This is not a concept that even the Arabs had, or even non Arabs to, to begin with had someone owning time. Malik Yawmiddin, right? The owner of the day of recompense. So you say the day of the match, but you don't say the day of recompense. You don't say the day of debt. You don't say these. You don't use these terms. We say the day of the match, the day of the event. So the way the Quran is constructed, this is what I'm trying to say to you. It is what I was saying to you. It is speaking in using Arabic or Arabic letters. This is the challenge of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Use Arabic letters, but bring grammatical constructs that were never used before okay. and use them. Bring words that were not known, but will still be understood if, they, if you bring them. And use old words in new ways, okay, that mm -hmm. we, they were not used before. And do all of that in one chapter of the Quran. And it is the highest eloquent uh, literature that can be there. So you cannot bring it and someone can phrase it in a better way, in a more eloquent way. Can you do that? Okay, that's that's a fair argument. I I, I see your point. The, the linguist. So it's an objective and... criteria, yeah, because a lot of people they think this is subjective criteria. It's not subjective criteria in any way, shape, or form. It is mm -hmm. a very objective challenge, but the people don't understand it. There's a beautiful book written on that, but it's in the Arabic language. You know, mm -hmm. it's called Al Mu'ajiza, Iada to Qara'at Al Ajaz Al Lughawi Al Quran Al Karim, uh, by Doctor Bassam Sa'id. And I recommend the people who speak Arabic to to read this book. It will it will it will put. He has the objective criteria there, and he will go through the chapters of the Quran, some of them, and he will show you. How every chapter has this criteria, new words, new constructs, 
words that were never used before, words used differently in every chapter of the Quran. That's why the Quran claims, bring a chapter like it. And I'll tell you something, every chapter of the Quran has a unique word that is not used in any other chapter. So it has a one word that was never used in any other chapter. Okay. So imagine now someone constructing all of these things that I'm telling you, and he is bringing revelation that he didn't prepare for. People come and ask him questions and revelation comes down and he instantly responds. You think a human being can, can do that? And he responds in this like, like the revelation miraculous, and revelation yeah. exactly manner. exactly straight away so they come uh, for example allah says yes they ask you about the ruh the prophet mm -hmm. responds with the revelation say that the, the uh, wa min al -ilmi illa response by the quran they come they ask him yes they ask you about the the moon uh, moon changing right mm -hmm. they ask you about menstruation say it is uh, harm to stay away from women in the period of ministration and the quran comes down some mm -hmm. of the some of it was circumstantial some of it was questions being asked some of it was in war you know, sir, mm -hmm. can a human being actually do that it in a period of 23 years? In a period of 23 years, no, and I, not contradict and not contradict himself, not a single time, right? Right, do you understand yeah. now? This is that's one example, that's one evidence, but I think it's more than enough. I don't need to go to any more, right? That should be more yeah. than enough for any honest person to say this has to be from God, right? Okay, that's that's a very fair argument. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can see how that is so. So okay. and, and, and that challenge has been there for 1,400 years. No one has been able to replicate it. What they did is what? Some people wrote uh, the very funny thing. They would be mocked. Whoever tried to bring something, they'd be mocked. Because what they did is they copied the styles of the Quran. And they just changed the words. They took some words from here and they put it there. This is plagiarism. It's not, it's not imitation. It's plagiarism, you know? Right. The Quran is, has a very objective criteria of how it can be imitated. And they couldn't do it. And whoever did it was mocked in history. Because that's why... The main history, his, uh, the main poets at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. First, why did the miracle come in the Arabic language? The reason the miracle came in the Arabic language was because the Arabs were advanced the most in Arabic. This was their prime. No, okay. we'll never come back to the prime of the Arabic language at that time. This was the thing that the Arabs were specialized in. And Allah gives miracles in the things that people are specialized in. I like see. a prophet, like yeah, Moses, he brought a miracle that showed the magicians because they were in, they were specialized in magic. That this was something bigger than magic. So it's the same kind of thing that the people do. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. Yeah. The time yeah. of Abraham, they used to burn people. So Abraham was thrown in the fire and he didn't burn. Okay. Mm. okay. So Allah gives a miracle that the people would understand things that they specialized in that they know. So Allah brought the Quran in the Arabic language as a miracle as a book for that reason. Now what the Arabs did is that they sent the best poets of their time. They sent Al Walid and Mughira. Um, these are the poets that they sent, the biggest poets of the time. They said, Go see what this man is saying. You, you guys, had a, uh, imagine you being at the peak of the Arabic language, then you have the biggest poets of the time going to the Prophet to test him. Right. Do you know what they ended up saying? No. They ended up saying, This is not, uh, this is nothing. One of them said, This is magic. Okay, wow. When you say something is magic, you're saying that something is supernatural, meaning you cannot do yeah. it. Yeah, you cannot imitate it, right? And another person, he says, the, uh, he said, he gave a very beautiful description of the Quran. Like he says, it rises and nothing it arises above it, and it shatters everything under it. This is a disbeliever, and he stayed as a disbeliever, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is, he said this is not the speech of a human being. He was in awe of the work. Yeah, no, he could not. He could not speak. He could not answer. You know? right. He couldn't speak. He mm -hmm. said this is not a speech of a human being. He went to them and he said this is not a speech of a human being. So okay. there is no doubt that this is more than enough for an honest person looking at the life of the Prophet, knowing it's impossible for him to put the Quran in that way, in that structure that it is today, without contradictions, without errors, without mistakes, in the eloquence that it is, all of that is impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That's that that was a good argument. But by the way, and that's one argument, yeah. I can hear you give a lot more, but the point is. There is more than enough for us to know that Islam is the truth. So many evidences upon each other, but one should be enough for a sincere person. Yeah. Okay. That was the question. What else do you, do you want to ask? I mean, okay. Yeah. So I guess that's a great transition to a little bit of my next question, which is a little bit more targeted on uh, miracles. And um, um, one of the things I asked my mom was like, um, you know, why, why not believe Muhammad was one of the prophets? You know, why, why would you finish at, or stop at Jesus type of thing? And um, she mentioned, well, Jesus had miracles you know he mm -hmm. cured the blind or you know he the, the story of the fish and the bread and you know all these all these stories and um and she's like muhammad doesn't really have these things so i guess this is a two-part question where my first yeah. part would be um 
so yeah, it was a great way to explain actually the the, the linguistic miracle of the Quran. It is the biggest means, miracle you can have, or else you want. Yeah. Right, but yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Continue, continue. Question. I don't mind answering it. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize by the way in advance if anything is a little ignorant or you know. I, no, I no. What are you apologizing for? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Just, just. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah. Um. So, so. Um. You know, the linguistic miracle of the Quran is, is a great example, and it's it's a great one also because I can see how even. Today we can try to challenge it, and if, if no one can really defeat that challenge, like, and it's objective. There's a criteria. That's the right. thing. Is this right. is what you need to do? It's telling yeah. you what you need to do, and it's yeah. demonstrating how it's done. That because we have the pre-Islamic poetry, we have the language of the Arabic, and we have dictionaries, mm -hmm. so we know that these constructs were not used before. We know that this is not how the Arabs spoke. So when I say right. this is new, there's evidence because we have the pre-Islamic poetry. You know? Yes, and I think I think so. Now that like we're, we're discussing this linguistic miracle, I think that that is a. An impressive one. Now I, I'm going to look into that more because I, I do think it is very impressive. Um, but so the, the two-part question, I guess, is how do we know um, the miracles committed by the previous prophets are true? You know what I mean? Like we can challenge the Quran right now and still be be in awe of the beauty and the miracle. And and but you know we can't go back and watch Moses part the sea. You know what I mean? So how do we how do we know that really happened? And then the second part is what are some of the miracles that Muhammad had uh, had done. Okay, the answer to the first question is that's the point. You cannot know uh, because the only miracle that is left is the miracle of the last prophet because the last prophet is the prophet that is for everyone while the other prophets were only for their people. So their miracles were not intended for everyone to begin with. So, so in the miracles... Yeah, it no, 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 no. I'm saying the miracles of Musa alayhi salam was for the children of Israel. It was not for you to see anyways. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to explain. I'm just making another point now, right? Mm -hmm. Those miracles were not for us. So it would make sense that we cannot verify them anyways because they're not for us. Mm -hmm. so miracles okay. were not specifics for us. They were for the people. That's why the poet, he said, The prophets, they came with the, with the, with the signs, miracles. So they went away and you came with a Hakim, a miraculous book, a wise book, a constructed book that is never going to end. Versus the, the more time passes, the more you'll see miracles and beauty in it. And he's talking right? about the Quran right now. Yeah, yeah. There's a point. He's okay. talking about the Quran. So he's talking about this issue that the prophets, the, the, the miracles is gone now. No one can see them. Right. Yeah. But how can we know that they are there is by knowing that the Quran is from God. So once I prove the Quran is from God, then by default, whatever it says is true because it's from mm. God. And God knows what happened in history. I okay? see. I see. Yeah? So, so that's the, the, the first question. Second question, Prophet Muhammad there is so many miracles recorded of him doing physical miracles. For example, a very common uh, ones that are known. Prophet Salam, water, uh, they didn't have water. And he brought a small amount of water and water started uh, pouring out of his fingers. And there was thousands of people witnessing this event. Because okay. it was in a battle and he had thousands of people. It was food. There was not enough bread. The prophet baked it. And it fed a whole army of, of people while it was a little bit of bread and meat. Barely enough for one family. Okay. So uh, the prophet, alayhi salam, the idea of uh, the prophet splitting the moon. I heard that one and I, I, yeah. I didn't understand that at all, really. Yeah. What, ha it, what happened is the prophet did a miracle for the, the disbelievers of Quraysh. And then... Uh, Allah split the moon into two parts and then Allah rejoined the moon. And this uh, miracle was witnessed by some of the disbelievers and a lot of the believers. And then it's, it's recorded by many of the companions and it's recorded even by the testimony of some of the disbelievers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so these miracles are recorded by like, you know, the companions. And even, and even yeah, you will find right uh, drawings from the Persian Empire of a moon that is split into, into two pieces. Whether they're referring really? to that specifically or not. Yeah, that's, that's a different story. There is a, an, an Indian king there is in the, there's a record of an Indian king who became a, a Muslim and he traveled to, to, to the Prophet and he became a Muslim after this event took place and he said he saw it. There's a record that, that they, even even in the, if you go to uh, research in certain India's library, they will even uh, tell you that, that, that this happened, right? But these type of miracles are the miracles that are for the time for the people. Right. right? Okay. But, but I'm still telling you, there is uh, like uh, signs for his well, They're all recording miracles by other people of this yeah. happening at their time. Yeah. 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 Okay. But current day, the so these these moment. are just some. By the way, these are just some. Like for example, the Prophet ﷺ had revelation descending upon him in different mm -hmm. types. For example, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said the Prophet ﷺ had the revelation coming on him in winter and he used to sweat. 
do you know winter in, in, in the deserts how it is? <laughs> we've, we've, not, we've not seen winter because we've got buildings and walls protecting us and heat and all of these cars and exhaustion. You don't you don't know really cold. Sit mm-hmm. in the desert while there's no barriers. You get the point? Mm-hmm. It's proper cold. He said he sweats in the most cold day he used to sweat when the revelation came, used to come on him. The prophet, the revelation came on him and his leg was on the leg of another companion. And he said his leg almost broke from the weight of the revelation that came. Oh, wow. Right, mm. so those are, and I can go on and on. The miracles that happen in the life of the Prophet are so many. Mm. In you, uh, there are full books written on that. So to claim that oh, the Prophet didn't have these things, it's just a lot of Christians say that, but they have no clue about what, what happened. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it it is um a little bit of a tangent on this, but it is kind of unfortunate that when I ask you know my family or or, or my close you know mom and dad or anything that say they say some things that I, I kind of find a little hard to believe, and I almost feel like they're a little bit blinded. By the by their bias, face. bias, yeah, yeah. and the bias, and yeah, you know, yes. and um, it's difficult to discuss. Absolutely, things, absolutely. You know? Um, but okay, yeah, but and so today, to this day, you know, in our in our generation, the biggest miracle is clearly the Quran, though, and the, mm-hmm. the linguistic miracle of it. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah the so Quran and the Hadith as well, because the Hadith has prophecies of the future of the Prophet Sallam, has information that we did not know in the past, etc. So the, the Islam, we have today of Islam, is the miracle for everyone, because that's the Prophet you're appointed to. You're not appointed mm-hmm. to follow Musa alayhi salam, because you don't know, or we don't have a, a history recorded of what he used to do or what he said anyways. Okay, and, and can you clarify the, the difference between the Hadith and the Quran? The Hadith is the life of the Prophet ﷺ, what he said, what he did, or what he agreed upon when something happened in his presence, or his description. Mm, okay. Okay, so it's his life. And the Qur'an is the verbatim word of God, that literally God spoke it. Verbatim was a miracle that is spoken by God. That's why it's inimitable, it cannot be imitated, right? It's something that you can't even understand the concept of bringing something like it, that when I was telling you, right? So mm. it's letter speech of God that was spoken to Angel Gabriel, and Angel Gabriel... Uh, recited it to Prophet Muhammad who, who said it to us. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you for that clarification. No um, uh, the following questions are, I guess, just like s- smaller questions. Um, I know you guys use different words for this. I, I don't. I don't recall the exact words. But what what is heaven and hell like in Islam? It's a long. It's a long description. If you read the Quran, it's a long. The, in essence, hell is where people are punished for eternity. Where it is a fire and also this punishment with, with cold. A lot of people don't know that maybe. But there's even the hot, heat and cold in punishment because cold can be very severe punishment. They use it in prisons. It's a Guantanamo in certain places. They punish you with the cold because it can... It, 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 really, the pain enters uh, from within. It's not an external, it's more internal, the pain mm-hmm. from the bones. Do you get the point? It mm-hmm. can be very severe. So, mm-hmm. so uh, but hellfire generally, uh, people know it to be hot and obviously all of that. Burning and people, their skin would or renew etc it's mm. an eternal damnation of increasing punishment never ending increasing punishment okay? okay and paradise is the opposite is the eternal bliss in which you can have what you want what you desire because you obey god in this life and you believed in him okay, okay? I've, I've, I've always been a little bit curious on this because like i i never really understood um the and this may be a foolish question, but I, I never really understood the, the point of hell in some sense. Like, you know, I I kind of understand the idea, like, oh, you make mistakes and you learn from it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say you reach the end and you're you're standing up in front of God and you've made many, many sins and all this, and you just you just uh suffer for eternity. Like is that just to put fear in us and, and uh sway us more to the good? No, it's an actual punishment that will happen. That, that the people deserve and they mm-hmm. and the people will get will deserve for them this this obeying in their creator after knowing this is the truth right because mm-hmm. allah says he will he will make it clear he will show them our signs in the horizon and within themselves until it's clear to them that it is the truth allah says in the quran so people will know is the truth when they reject it and die upon rejecting it they're not going to be complaining in hellfire allah mm-hmm. will, they will be asking in hellfire they didn't come to you a messengers from among you giving you my signs and telling you the evidence they will say yes but we didn't listen but mm. we didn't use our intellect. But we mm. didn't obey. And Allah says if they were to be returned, they will come back to this obeying Allah again. Even after all of this. Mm-hmm. And going on hellfire. If Allah were to return them, and they will be asking, oh Allah, return us, we'll do good. Allah says even if they were to return, they will come back to, to what they used to do, and they are liars. Mm. Okay, and, and so there is no return from hellfire, right? Once you're in it, that's eternal. Like, that's it. Once you enter hellfire, there's no right. going out. 
Right. Okay. So the Quran says, "Yuriduna." There's many verses in the Quran. For, I'll give you one verse. "Yuriduna an yakhruju min al-nar wa mahum bi-kharijin minha wa lahum adabun muqim." They want to exit the fire, and they will not exit the fire, and they will have a resident punishment in it. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. And um, and I guess heaven is just glorious, like eternal bliss in some sense. I I've heard like and apologies again of foolishness or ignorance. You know things like twelve. To Twenty-four wives, some th- some things like that. You know, virgin, virgin Mary. I, I don't there's know. Not, there is no, there's not twenty-four wives, but the point is, you get whatever you want. If you want one thousand, one billion wives, right. there's no problem. Right. I, right. I don't think why a lot of people fix, fixated on the numbers, but the reality is the Quran. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, <laughs> for them, whatever they will in it. it. Doesn't matter what the number is. What, what you want, you will get. You will get eternal pun- uh, eternal bless. Okay. So men desire women. You know, if you're a man, I don't, don't know about the colorful people today, yeah? But <laughs> yeah. If you are a man, you desire women, yeah? yeah? Okay? If you desire women, this is this is something that you will be happy to get right. in, okay. in the afterlife, right? And it's the mm-hmm. primary thing. It's not like for, for women. Women and men are different when it comes to this issue, right? It's the primary thing that a man, a man thinks about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But essentially, so Allah, Allah given some descriptions is to in, incentivize you as a man to to look forward to the reward and be patient upon the trials of this life. All of these women that are sliding in your DMs and this, <laughs> these, these these kind of trials of this life, Allah is telling you about the afterlife, a woman in the afterlife. So you're patient about the people you see in the streets and this and that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So let, let's say, for example, um, yeah. I become Muslim. And I know previously you've you you sp- become Muslim in the end of this chat. Don't worry, but yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes yeah, I mean we'll see. I guess, but um, let, let's, let's <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. hypothetical, hypothetical. Yes. Um, yes, I become, and you know, in my in my head, I've, and even in in my Coptic Orthodox, it's it's frowned upon. But let's say I get tattoos, which you, this is something you've spoken with the last person about, and you mentioned that it was a major sin. Hmm. Um, how how is how does that work? Like, let's say I do that. I know it's a sin. You know, I'm not committing an ignorant sin. I understand it's a sin, similar to how we may smoke or drink and sin like that. And you know, like you know, like I, I don't, I'm not going to be ignorant about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say that happens, and I'm not saying it will. But how would how would that go? Well, would he punish me in the hellfire for a little bit then, and then bring me into? If you don't repent. Well, how, so how does the repentance go? Because I thought you said the repentance was like. Yeah, I, you, I said that if you don't repent, you're punished. Does, does, the repentance is to stop the act. Mm-hmm. And then have no intention of coming back to the act and sincerely regret it. So I can get and ask, and ask God for mm-hmm. and ask God for forgiveness. And there's a fourth condition: if you take something from someone, you have to return it to him. If you steal some money, you have to give it back, etc. Right, right. So if you don't repent, you're punished for for the sins. But Allah can forgive as well. I'm not saying that Allah doesn't. He can. It's up to His wealth. Mm-hmm. But He has the right to punish you. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you are if you are Muslim and you do commit you know, one of these major sins, let's say you could enter hellfire and you could come out of it. Yeah, if if yes, yes, you, there will be people who will enter hellfire will come out. There is traditions in that from the Prophet clear about that. People will be punished for a period of time for the sins that they did in this life. So Muslim is not a, a get out of jail free card like Christianity. Just believe died for you, Jesus died for your sins and you go to paradise. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. you have to actually stick to the teachings of Islam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm trying to say. So this mm-hmm. is the thing about about Islam. It's a, it's a just uh, religion. Because I, I guess that's one of the things that's um, mm. uh, making it a little bit difficult. It's like let's like, let's say I wanted to convert. Um, mm. I wouldn't want to convert and like be a bad Muslim. You know what I mean? Like I still have tendencies or habits or you know sinful habits, things like this, and um, you know desires. Like I still would want a tattoo or something like that. I I, I think that might be. And, and I'm hearing like these maybe major sins and things like this, and it's like ugh, I don't I don't want to be in this kind of like I don't want to. You be become Muslim, Muslim, you become Muslim, and then you focus on these issues. Trust me, the, if you the uh, Satan, what he tries to do is he tries to hurdle you from accepting Islam by all of these issues. Because now, right now, you're committing the biggest sin ever. Doesn't matter all of these sins that are nothing in comparison to this belief in God, are right. nothing in comparison to not being a Muslim. Right. So he's he's playing this game with you, but in reality, by not accepting Islam, you're committing the biggest unforgivable sin. Mm. So who cares if I if I were to accept Islam? I'm not saying do sins, right? But if I were to accept Islam and, and commit a sin, right now I'm already committing the biggest sin out there, which is I'm disbelieving in God. Right. So in an, in an objective comparison, it's yeah. like you're, you're you if you're non-Muslim and you commit the sin, or you're Muslim and you commit the sin, 
the, the Muslim who's committing the sin is going to be uh, maybe a little bit more, or God's going to give a little more lenience. You know, of, of every Muslim will commit sins eventually. That's the point. Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. perfect Muslims. Everyone commits sins. There's no perfect humans. So they will commit, everyone will commit sins. But at least he believes in God and he has a chance of forgiveness from God. As I said to you, even if this may, this major sins, God can forgive. It's up to Allah. But the point is you have to be a Muslim. It's a condition. Mercy of God is conditional in Islam. Just like Christianity, conditions to believe in Jesus. While they will claim it's not conditional, it's conditional. But it's conditional in Islam. Uh, to get the mercy, you have to be a Muslim. Mm. Okay, I see. Okay, you ready to become Muslim? <laughs> um... <laughs> Come on, you're there. What, what is stopping you? There's nothing stopping you. Do you do you agree what I was saying makes sense? Do you agree there's a creator created the universe? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree that based on what I said to you, that Prophet Muhammad has to be a messenger of God? Do you agree? I do think he could be, yes, and he is like the uh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, based on what I said, he is. Not could be, but he is. <laughs> I don't want to make too much like uh, like certain claims, you know. I don't wanna Why? Why? What are the pos possibilities do you have? I don't know. Maybe give it's, me another uh, possibility. I I don't know. I am. You see, so it's certain. If something <laughs> has no other possibilities, by default, it's certain. You know, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. other rational possibilities. Trust me, I'm, I'm making it easy for you. There's no other rational possibility other no, than him being a messenger you. of God. I I you. No, I've, I've looked into it, and you know, I watch mm -hmm. debates all the time, and it it always seems like the Muslim comes out winning on on the top. You know what I mean? And it's like, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the natural. It's the natural thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you and have I the wonder, truth, you have to win. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just wonder, like, are these other preachers just not intelligent? Because, like, it seems like the Muslim uh, debater is like, he knows the stuff. Allah says in the Quran, "Fainnaha ta'amal absar, walakin ta'amal qulub allati fi sudur." Verily, it's not the eyes that become blind; rather, the hearts that are in the breast that become blind. So it, they are blinded. They're mm -hmm. blind. You will see the, literally in you as someone outside that you can see. The, how? The, what's wrong with these people? That's what you'll be thinking in your mind. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. How can you be in such embarrassment? You got no questions. You don't know anybody. You're still there. You're trying to preach. You know? Mm -hmm. They're blinded. Mm -hmm. They're blinded. And and that's why Allah is the one who guides. So that's why I'm telling you. Should Right now you're ready. You should take the, 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 the shahada and go forward with the step. Do not delay. Because you're delaying might be one of the reasons that your heart is uh, is closed and shut to Islam in the future. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So you are mm -hmm. there today. It makes sense to you. The evidences are there. Allah has brought you here today. You got your questions answered. So you should move on and accept Islam. Move And any questions you have, you will be answered after you accept Islam as well. Nothing will change. You will do it with me, inshallah. Trust me. It will be very easy for you. Once you take it, you will see how it is different. So it's because it's a testimony of faith. That you say it will impact your heart, inshallah. Okay, so say after me, inshallah. Yeah, say I testify. Okay, let's let's do it. Why not? <sighs> inshallah. Let's see. Say I testify. I testify. There's nothing worthy of worship. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. Is his messenger and servant. And servant. That's easy. It's, it's very simple, right? <laughs> Subhanallah. Now we say the same thing, but in Arabic, yeah? Because you're mm -hmm. an Arab man. Like, come, I don't know you speak Arabic. I'll do my it's okay. I'll, I'll do my <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Don't worry. I'll say it word for word. Say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasul, Rasul, Allah, Allah. That's it, man. You bring it. Come, come, come. Bring it. In. You know, give back. Allah, <laughs> <I'm laughs> well, mashallah. You, you, are, you are making me happy, mashallah. Allah, well, you made me happy by by staying and listening, and accepting Islam. May Allah Azza bless you. And your previous sins are forgiven. If you st do good, and your previous sins are will be forgiven. Allah promised to forgive the previous sins that you did in your life, and then any good that you did is still there. Allah is kept for you because Allah does not take your right away from you, right? And it's worth it for me to stay this long because it's late, very late here, you know. Three, no, I, I <laughs> no, no, why you apologize? You become Muslim. Why you apologize? <laughs> yeah, apologize. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing to apologize for. Yeah. And a lot of people, mashallah, are very happy for you. Allah Akbar, they say. I, I, I do feel like it's a step in the right direction. Um, Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, we're happy for you, Akhi. You are my brother. We all are a part of our family. You need anything, financial help, any help, anything I can do, I will do, inshallah. 
And this is my email. You saw it, yeah. This is the one that Sister yeah. Bushra put. Things like that, and uh, inshallah, we'll get everything sorted for you. Okay. Okay, man. I really, really appreciate okay. it. And oh, I, I'm, I'm happy to came, man. I'm the one who's, who's has the pleasure here. You know, <laughs> pleasure <laughs> is all mine, literally. You know, <laughs> that's they say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice talking to you, man. I'll see you, yeah. Yeah, nice talking to you. Yeah, see you.